up with you. This is amazing. Okay, is your hair blown back? Is your brain on full? If you got a little bit more space, I would love to take every, all the amazing things that you just learned from Alex, all that formulation and all that information about your immune system. How about we now talk about the big so what? What does it do? How does it work in your body? Would you like to talk about that? Just, just for a minute, just for a minute. So this is kind of an amazing story. Those of you who got to catch Dr. Riggs over in the other uh, stage got to hear about this progression of On Guard products, where we've been, kind of where we're going. I think this is the next step. What do we know about On Guard? How many of you have ever had a neat experience with On Guard in your own life? Raise your hand. How many of you have an On Guard product with you right now? Raise your other hand. <laughs> okay, look around, look around. This is what we call experiential evidence. Now, that may not sound like a whole lot, but honestly, we use this to direct our research efforts. I want you to keep that in mind. This is important to us. We need to know what the experiences are that you're having. That helps direct us in what to look for as we do clinical research now, the next step. Okay, so we've got experiential evidence. We've got in vitro evidence on On Guard itself, the On Guard oil blend. You've probably seen papers, amazing oils in petri dishes and test tubes. They're showing us protein pathway activation and all kinds of power for these microbes. So we know that it's got some power going into it. Now, what happens when we put that all together? Do we have evidence in people? We do. We do. Let's talk about some of that evidence. Now, in vitro and experiential evidence are leading us down this path of clinical research. And my position right now at doTERRA is on this new frontier of really getting to the root of what happens inside the human body. I am so excited to be on this path because it's a brand new path, right? I, in in the, the big session today, that quote about if they're, you know, don't take the path that's there, blaze your own. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but this is exactly what doTERRA is doing, right? This is brand new stuff that you're going to hear today, and I hope that you're as excited about it as we are. So we decided to uh, devise a very simple test. Now, for all the complexities of the immune system, we're not going to capture it all just yet, hopefully at some point. But for this very simple first test on these On Guard tablets, we wanted to see what happens when someone takes it inside. What are the results? What does the body do? How does it react? So a very simple test was devised. We take a blood sample. This is what we call the baseline. We've got to know where to start, right? Then the on-guard tabs go in. We take another blood sample at three hours later and another one at five hours. Now, why those kind of wacky times? Well, previous research on some of the on-guard components, specifically the beta-glucan, was done at that five-hour time point. So we wanted to validate that and say, OK, we're seeing similar results. And then the three-hour time point was well, we wanted to see what was going on along the way as well. So it was, it was a simple test, very fast. And honestly, I, was, I know how powerful On Guard is, but I thought, well, I don't know. It's a big human body. It's a very small test. Are we going to see anything? I was sure enough that we would, that we actually went ahead with it. What do you guys think? Oh, a few of you are excited. Everyone else is like, I don't know. I'm going to reserve judgment until I see what she has to say. <laughs> Let me tell you what we were looking for. Maybe that'll help. OK, so again, the immune system, very complex, very complicated. We were going to focus on kind of two areas of the immune system. So signaling molecules and white blood cells. This is just small pieces, but these are very important pieces of the immune system. Now. We wanted to see, OK, does the on guard do what we hope for a daily use model, which is kind of help the immune system flex its muscles a little bit, help it be more robust, more healthy. We don't want it to respond like we do when we're sick. We don't want this massive response that's out of control. No, no. We want something that is metered and measured and healthy and controlled. OK, that's kind of what we were looking for. So. The two things that we wanted to measure that by, the signaling molecules, let's talk about those for a second. These are called cytokines. 
And this is how your body sends messages to itself. These are its text messages and phone calls and Zoom meetings. Now you guys, a lot of you have teams, you have downlines, you have families. Imagine how you would function if you couldn't call or text or Zoom your people. Would that work? Maybe, you could write a letter. But it would be inefficient at best, right? And chaos at worst. This is how our body functions too. We, these cytokines are critical. So we wanted to see, is there a change in the types and the amounts of these messages that are kind of flying back and forth after someone takes the on guard taps? What happens? Now, the other thing, of course, the white blood cells themselves. These are our sentries and our production factories and our worker bees of the immune system. We would die without them. They are very, very important to us. So we, again, don't want to send these guys into crazy production mode, but what if we were to just give them a little nudge, say, hey, wake up, be on guard, be on guard. These are our sentries circling the parapet. Okay, we want them to be awake. So those two things, very simple test. Guess what we found? Let me show you. Within just a few hours of a single dose, just one dose of the on-guard tabs, we saw this kind of nice, gentle, upward nudge of those white blood cells. Now, this doesn't indicate a sickness. This is not the same kind of thing we'd see if someone suddenly came down with an acute infection, but it's more like a standing at attention, right? Now, specifically, that, that's the green. You see the total white blood cells over there in the blue, that's our lymphocytes. Now, what do lymphocytes do? You've probably heard that before. I know Alex uh, mentioned that too. These are the cells that actually produce our antibodies. They help seek out invaders and they help find marked cells that must be destroyed. These guys are critical, very, very important. So the fact that these kinds of cells showed this nice gentle little bit of increase suggests that we're kind of poised for protection. We're poised for something, watching. Now, what about those signaling molecules we talked about, the cytokines, the interleukins? We ran a panel of 13 different kinds of interleukins, just trying to see what we could see. We were casting a nice wide net. Now, these are the text messages, the phone calls, the Zoom calls that are going from one part of the body to the other. We found that several specific kinds of interleukins were affected. Now that's the graph that you see there with the orange and the blue. Interleukin 10 and interleukin 13. Isn't that exciting? You're like, oh, I'm like I have no idea what that means. Okay. Let me tell you, interleukin 10 and interleukin 13 are actually kind of interesting and it may not mean a lot to you, but let me tell you why. Interleukin 10, probably the most well-known and highly studied message molecule that we have in our immune system. It's very important. Now, this is primarily anti-inflammatory. That's good, right? But more, more importantly, it kind of functions as a balancer of your immune response. This is good news. We want that to be a nice, balanced response. It helps the host be able to clear away things that it doesn't want anymore that are bad for it, minimizing damage to the good, healthy cells. Now, interleukin 13, this one's primarily kind of on the pro-inflammatory side, but more as the regulator of the cells that are doing that reaction. So the fire chief coming in and kind of directing the action, okay? So these two together, pro, anti, balanced. That's great. That's the best kind of thing we could hope for. Now, in addition to that, you'll see there on the purple, we have our cytokines, we had a receptor that showed an interesting increase in that purple chart right there. What are receptors? These are molecules that stick up on the surface of our cells, right? They sit there, they watch for signals, radio antennas, if you're old enough to remember that, TV antennas on the sides of houses. They catch the signals that come by and then they signal down into the cell, make changes, wake up. So the fact that we're seeing an increase in that is interesting to me too, because specifically interleukin-2 is in charge of 
the pace and the amount of an immune response. So it's kind of helping us decide, okay, how much are we going to respond right now? I'm seeing these receptors increasing, and I'm thinking, okay, this is kind of like a company increasing the number of phone lines it has open because, oh, there may be an influx of calls. We're going to prepare. This is the body's preparation. We were so excited to see this series of things happening after the dose of the on guard tabs because it wasn't violent. It wasn't forcing the body to doing things that were unhealthy, that signaled sickness. Quite the opposite. It signaled preparation and organization. So, what you're seeing here, this data, this is the very first glimpse of anything like this that's ever been done. Now, this is our proof of concept. So, the idea here is that we've got to do this on larger numbers of people, as always. In science, you can't just have a small sampling and say, oh, this is how it works. This is our initial data, and we're so excited by it because it confirms what we know, what we've seen with the Angard oil blend, and what we suspected with our formulation going into it. And we're so excited now to actually have real data in real humans about what's going on. So when taken together, these results suggest to us that our cells are in this nice, poised, preparatory state. They're ready and waiting. Right? The immune system isn't forced into burning its resources, but rather it's kind of like storing food in advance of a famine or preparing sandbags in advance of a flood. That way, when you need a quick, coordinated effort, all the resources are in place. You're ready to go. This, to me, was so exciting. A single dose, even in a small scale, we saw this change happening in the human body. The coordination efforts and the preparation efforts of the immune system were amazing, and they were supported in healthy ways. That, to me, was a fantastic outcome of this study. So what does this mean to you? I know we've thrown around a lot of science words. Here's a couple of just really basic take-home ideas. And here's something you can share. Number one, on guard just works, right? You're like, well, duh. I didn't have to sit there all talk for that. But on guard works. We've known this. We've seen this. We've seen it in petri dishes and in test tubes and now in people. And that continues to amaze and thrill me. I was looking at these blood results and geeking out over them, which again is kind of weird as I say that out loud. But this is just the first of many tests that we are excited to do with OnGuard and with our other oils in humans, in our clinical research efforts. We're going to talk a lot more about that in the coming days as well. And I think simply this is one more piece of evidence cementing in our minds that OnGuard is synonymous with healthy immune support, right? Hopefully it gets you excited about using the new OnGuard tabs in a daily supportive health regimen because the results are showing amazing things. And we are hoping to be able to do more studies about, well, how long do the effects last? And what happens after you've now taken it for some time? What, all these questions that are popping up, that's good science if it gives you more questions than it actually answers. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Now, although this is a small scale study, it really excites us and directs us toward our future efforts in these clinical research trials. And we really want to be able to provide you with the validation that you can now talk about, that you can count on, that you can take for yourselves and for your families. You know, I love this research, and I need this research as a scientist, but it's still only part of my passion, because the other part, like you, is how I see it working for me and for my family. I see it in my life, and I am so blessed and so grateful to be able to see both the science side and the part of it that lifts my family. So it's truly an honor to be with you today to talk about results, to share these exciting first glimpses 
of the clinical research that we've got going on. Stay with us. Come on this journey with us. We are excited, we are thrilled, and there's so much more to come. Thank you so much.